Hi, welcome back to Imperium Learning. This is the third video in a video series that um, relates to estimating and interpreting a vector error correction model. I'm just going to dive straight in now with analyzing the co-integration vector. Now the first thing to bear in mind when we look at this is we look at the signs of the of the variables. We look at the signs. Now the key point to bear in mind is that if we have a negative sign then that means this variable is positively related to the dependent variable. Right, so let's just repeat that again. If the sign is negative that means it's positively related to the variable. If the sign is positive, so as you can see, this is plus 0 0.059391. That means it's negatively related to the average house price. Now, the question is, why are the signs the opposite? Right, well, a good way of thinking about it, let's, uh, let me go on here. So this is, the, I've just written this down. I have my um, error correction term here, um, which is log, which is just one. Again, I've, I've, I haven't I didn't put one there as the coefficient because I didn't think it was necessary. Minus 0 0.2561, ln m4, as you can see, that's what it is there. Minus 0 0.53, uh, one, one nine for uh, the credit variable and so on and so forth. This is what it looks like. Um, this is what my co-integration vector is here. Okay. Now, what? Why is the why does this negative coefficient minus zero point two five six one tell me that the money supply is positively related to? The average house price. Why is the coefficient of minus 0 0.5319, why does that indicate that credit is positively related to the average house price? Well, the best way to think about it is to set the, the value of your error correction term to zero. Okay, now actually th this, this should actually be working in reality because if we go on view and we go on representations, now I know this looks a bit confusing, but suffice to say, if we if we look at this one, now remember I'm looking in, in particular at my uh, D ln AHP variable, because that's, that's my topic of interest, the average house price. And as you can see, if, you, if we look at this, straight away this gives us the error, the error correction term right here. See that? Learn AHP minus one. All of this. And it goes all the way to the constant. Like that. And so what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to copy all that. I'm going to generate a new series and I'm going to call it... I've, apparently I've already got a an error correction term there which I've saved, but I'm going to call this one ECT. Two. I'm going to write equals and then I'm going to paste this in and then I'm going to press enter. Now I'm just going to open up this error correction term very quickly as you can see this is the um, this is my error correction term here let's just open that to the side this is literally just a if we go back to here go on to the estimation output like this and we look at this, so look, 1 ln AHP, 1, uh, minus 0 0.2561, minus 0 0.2561, minus 0 0.5319, minus 0 0.5319, plus 0 point, and so on and so forth. Let's just, uh, let's look at the mean for this error correction term very quickly. If we want to look at the mean of this we click on view, we click on descriptive stats and tests and we click on histogram and stats. Look at the mean. The mean should be 
zero. In an ideal world, it would be exactly zero. Mine obviously isn't. It's um, it's zero point zero zero three. But suffice to say that it's a it's a a reasonable um, decision to make to set the error correction term to equal zero. Okay. So if we set our the value, if we if we assume that our error correction term equals zero, and it we we can make this assumption because it should have a zero mean. This is what we have. So we have all our our things here, and then what we want to do is we want to rearrange all the variables onto the right hand side of the equation, leaving only our dependent variable. And remember, mine is the average house price on this side. So as you can see, when you when you put it like this, now we have it. The signs have all reversed from up here. So up here they would minus 0 0.2561, now it's plus 0 0.2561. The credit was minus 0 0.5319, now it's plus 0 0.5319, and so on. So that straight away gives us the signs of the long-term relationships of our variables. So straight away we can see that the money supply is, um, is positively related to the average house price, we can see that credit, the availability of credit, uh, has a positive effect on the average house price. We can see that the interest rate, so in other words, is negatively related to the um, average house price. So in other words, when the interest rate goes up, we would expect this to have a negative effect on the average house price. In other words, when the interest rate goes up, we'd expect average house prices to go down. Now, when you analyze the um, the signs of your long run relationships. You should also um, you should also be assessing whether or not your findings align with economic theory. It's very important that your findings make sense. And so let's let's just take a look again at mine. I found that the money supply is positively related to the average house price. Does that make sense? Well, um, as you can see here, I've, I've uh, found some economic theory which says that as stated in the quantity theory of money, an increase in money supply would inflate the price level of both financial and physical assets. Moreover, an increase in money supply could encourage investment in the real estate industry, raising the demand and thus real estate prices. Let's look at, however, let's go back and apparently the unemployment rate is positive, right? So when, and I've deliberately selected this one, apparently the unemployment rate is positive. So in other words, if the unemployment rate goes up, then apparently also the average house price is gonna go up. But that doesn't really make, we would have to say that this is a questionable finding because um, this would imply that the more people that are unemployed, with, or sorry, this would suggest that what, what we would want to highlight is that it should be negative because the more people that are unemployed, the less income that people have, which would lower spending in the economy, and that in turn would lower demand for, house price, for houses, and that in turn would lower the price of houses as a whole. So that doesn't really make sense. Um, but what we can, I mean, for me personally, I discussed the fact that um, I had a lot of structural breaks in my data and that probably um, made findings less than ideal. Um, but yeah, so certainly when you're analyzing your, your, um, your error correction term, ensure that you're looking at the signs of the relationships and you're checking that they align with economic theory. And if they don't, analyze why they don't. Um, if you can't find, this is assuming that you can't find a way to better estimate your model so that everything um, aligns with economic theory that you found. I can see that I'm coming up to the 10 minute mark yet again. I'm gonna be resuming my analysis in the next video. Okay, bye now.